Talks Games video. Let's watch that. How to forget a game. Like, is there a game you'd like to forget and play again? For me, that's Dark Souls 3. And Hollow Knight. For me, it's those two games mainly. Neo Automata 2. Imagine a game that changed you, a story that made you see the world differently, characters that made Whoa, your heart too. ache and a smile unravel Able across Marvin. your face, a setting Damn. that took your breath away, an ending Pokemon that brought tears oh, yeah. to your eyes. Every gamer, I reckon, has at least one game that they place in this category, a game that has made them utter the phrase, I wish Damn I could you. forget it so yeah. that I could play it for the first time yeah. again. I wish yeah. I could experience this blind just one more time. Mm. And it's kind of a beautiful request when you really think about it, to be so enchanted by a memory that you'd be willing to sacrifice it in order to feel your heart swell and fall in love with it all over again. What game is that? Which got me wondering, is this something that you can actually do? Is it possible to men in black yourself. outer wilds from your mind? Could I purposely erase my time with Final Fantasy X from None all those- None of poetic. All his videos are really fucking poetic. His videos are amazing. Go. How would we, in theory, like, intentionally- Like a year back, I went on to a freaking Dare Talks games rabbit hole. It was beautiful. We forget a game. So naturally, this being the channel that dared to ask you why you keep playing games that you hate, then used the psychology to make you question how you spend your time. Now that that's done, I can fully articulate why I hate this game. Yeah, been... I've even thought about going back and playing Dark Souls 2. Just... I've been gold spotted! Just so I can remind myself about all the reasons I should hate it. Yeah. Oh my I God. started doing some <laughs> digging, and the research is there. But I, I kind of had to interpret it backwards. You'll see what I mean. How long does it take for all of those juicy details to leak out of our ears? I have answers for that. A few How years, does the probably. type of game affect my memory of it? I can answer that. What can we do? Oh, I think like one thing is definitely to do is like rush it. Like play it really quickly without taking breaks. And uh, with that, your brain takes it more like as a whole all together. Like don't take your time with it. <laughs> like rush through it. That way, it's more forgettable. ...do for games that we haven't played yet to eventually forget them. Good question. Important question. We'll talk about it. Can I that, really... That's, that's also why... Wow, sorry for the, show, for the whole lot of pauses after another. But that's also why, for example, with anime, if you, like, binge an anime, it stays less in your mind rather than when you actively watch it while it's releasing. Like, one episode at a time uh, per week. It stays longer in your fucking memory. Because, you know, you gotta, you gotta wait a fucking week. And you gotta, uh, just with you over a longer t uh, time of, uh, period of time, Truly, you know? completely forget a game and go back into it 100% blind. I'll answer that now. Short of causing your brain real damage, no, you can't. Not completely, not in this era, let uh, me not so... waste your time. If you've no replayed break. a game a ton over no the years break. and think about it on a weekly basis because it's part of who you are, that is a much deeper rooted memory and weeding yeah. that completely out just isn't realistic based on what I've found. But across this little journey I've taken, I've discovered that what you can do is take advantage of your mind's natural tendency to forget details and leverage that with time, specific strategies, and a spoonful of discipline to then later find yourself shocked at how little you actually remember about a game. So that you not only feel cascades of nostalgia when you boot it up again, but also a genuine sense of discovery and wonder kin to what- Yeah, I really want to go back to the same sense of discovery with Elden Ring, to be fair, like... Bro, the discovery in Elden Ring was beautiful. The open world in Elden Ring, it felt like around every corner the world kept expanding and there was something to discover. Amazing. What you did the first time you opened those doors. You're going to- I wanna play Zelda Breath of the Wild again? I haven't even played that yet. I haven't even played that yet. You learn a lot in this video today. And I'm still playing Elden Ring for, really for the first time. Very fun, bro. Yeah. Elden Ring for the first time. Amazing. I typically structure my videos in a very particular way. Uh, wasn't brilliant a website sponsor? I present a problem to you I don't or remember. a scenario, and then I give you a chance to chew on it. Then 
I talk about why it matters to games and maybe why you saw it the way you did. And this is exactly how Brilliant works and what I think is so remarkable about it. You see, Brilliant is where you learn by doing. You'll find thousands of interactive lessons on math, data analysis, oh, programming, wait, and science. It structures these lessons how I structure my videos, question what? first. Instead of hurling information at your face like a textbook, it opens with questions that it then lets you experiment with and chew on. Then, it will provide an explanation, which is a method proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. Brilliant is not oh. in the business of getting you to memorize. It's about problem solving, developing a better foundational sense of concepts instead of cramming them. And as we'll talk about a little bit later in this video, it understands the importance of daily learning for retention of concepts. Makes sense Brilliant that he got that sponsor, actually. A ton of new actually, really makes data, sense that he's got that sponsor. All of which uses real-world data sets from sources like Starbucks, X, and Spotify to train you to see trends and make better informed Ow. decisions. What the to fuck? try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash games or just click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant oh, for sponsoring, shit. and now it's time we Back learn to the video. how to let it rest. Let it rest. One of the weirdest habits I have is the more I like a song, the less I listen to it. Because if I listen to it too much, it loses the impact it had the first time I heard it. Possibly He's the right. most beautiful thing I've ever listened to is a song called Sakura Nagashi, a song by Hikaru Utada. It plays at the end of the third Evangelion rebuild movie, and it will, without fail, bring me to tears. But because Aww. I do have such a, a visceral reaction to it, I want to capture that and protect it. I heard it for the first I've time around the three movies. years ago, and since that day, including right now when I have to listen to the opening notes to edit this, I've only listened to it maybe five or six times. My rationale is simply, I refuse to let it become played out. It would break my heart for it to start to feel like just another song, or get stuck in my head repeating obnoxiously for two days. And this pretty well sums up where I began my research and the first strategy we'll talk about today letting it rest. In 1880, German yeah. psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus ran a We're series of studies Germans. and we're back to the Germans. Every time it's back to the Germans. How 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 do we always get back to the Germans? <laughs> Why is it always back to the Germans? Developed this, <laughs> the forgetting the graph? curve. It illustrates oh. how quickly we forget new information. Time. Within okay. 20 minutes, almost half of new information is lost. Within a day, wow. you lose most of what you're going to lose, and then it steadies out. What? Uh, kids, it's your fault. My bad. <laughs> My bad! That is crazy. Tw within 20 minutes, you lose 60% of it? Uh, no, you keep 60% of it, you lose 40% of it? All roads led to Germany! Out over time. And if you're thinking 1880, the same year the Cowboys last won a Super Bowl, yeah, I'm not trusting huh? that info. I get it, believe me, I do. But you should know <laughs> that this has been tell? replicated a ton in new research over the years. Ebbinghaus was onto something. But as you can imagine, this line varies quite a bit depending on countless factors. He used a also list of words in his study. We're talking about fleshed out worlds and characters scored by gripping music and embellished with complex battle oh, systems, which as we discussed before, makes for more elaborative and deeply rooted memories. Your recollection of a short game with simple mechanics won't be as strong as a longer one with several systems and a complicated plot. But what's especially relevant here is something called distributed practice, a term generally used in the context of studying. You see, this okay. curve assumes you are exposed to the stimulus one time. If you go to lecture and then never study, this is about the rate that it decays from your memory. But each and every time you review the material, the line flattens yeah, out a that little is, more. That's exactly why I said like anime stays long in your brain. This is exactly, exactly it. This is, <laughs> this is exactly it. <laughs> I was proven right by science! Get yeah, science! Info is stored to long-term memory, and it takes much longer for it to fade away. Consequently, science. the more play sessions you have with the game, the more you are building and rebuilding those pathways in your brain. We talked about this a Makes little bit sense, in the binging yeah. versus drifting video way back when. 
We tend to remember significantly more about a game or a show or a book if we enjoy it slowly over time than if we binge it, and this is why. If it's all in a weekend, we don't distribute the learning and the curve drops quickly. If we play it for a little bit every day, it nestles a home in our minds and the curve begins to flatten out. There are two what, what, we don't what, what, what? time than if we binge it, and this is why. If it's all in a weekend, we don't distribute the learning and the curve drops quickly. If we play there, it yeah, for a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, every yeah, day, yeah, yeah. it nestles a home in our minds yeah, and yeah, the curve yeah. begins to flatten out. There are two takeaways here. The first okay. is that if you love a game and you want that magical first time playthrough again, you'll have a better chance at getting it oh, if you signal. binge the game once one. over a weekend than if you played it slowly over the course of a month or so. Which of course means shorter games are easier to forget than long ones. Two, yes. and by the way, this is the critical one, much like Sakura Nagashi, you have to let it rest. One of our favorite things to do as gamers when we roll credits on something is immediately go process it by re-listening to our favorite tracks from the game, pursuing fan and art, about watching it other people play it, gobbling uh, up an yeah, essay yeah, or a lore yeah, video, yeah, yeah. hell, maybe immediately booting up yep. a new game plus. And this is all completely normal, by the way. Do you know how many times I went and sobbed to Weight of the World after I finished Nier Automata? Oh my god! Oh my god! I still sob to that song, man! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Not Nier Automata! Ah! Ah! What a beautiful song. Bro, bro. Weight of the World is a masterpiece, it is! Bro, it is! Oh my god, and then the credits are sung in multiple languages and oh. But if, this. and only if, you want to one day come oh, back to that play game blind, Born, at some point I think you bought, must uh, let the it other day. rest. The earlier the better. You have to leave- What? What's it about? I haven't played it? Ooh, uh, I- I would say just try it. <laughs> just try it. Subreddits, you must avoid the arc. You cannot listen to the soundtrack. You cannot watch your favorite streamer play it. You must remove every instance of it from in front of you for a very long time because each and every time your mind retrieves and connects back to those memories, you're only flattening the curve. And again, to really drive the point home, Avoiding it will not yeah. erase it from your memory any more than me avoiding Hikaru Utada for months will erase that song from mine. But it yeah, will make it will the just... subtleties of her voice, yes. the rich harmonies and details of the instruments and the emotions stirred feel shockingly less familiar than it would if I just had it as a regular rotation on a playlist. And the same goes for games. You'll likely always remember Bro, Joel's tragic loss he... at the start of The Last oh of Us, the God. rhythm. Bro! Bro, I played The Last of Us a few years after it came out, right? I didn't play it on release. I played it a few years after it came out because I didn't have a PlayStation at the time when it came out and shit. And... Like... I'm pretty sure, like, I heard people talking about it and shit. But when I actually, like, played the start of The Last of Us, his daughter just... Getting shot and just oh, bro, a oh, bro. That that scene literally had me in tears. That that scene instantly had me in tears. I was I was bro, bro. That that scene is just that's that just something else. You start getting attached to her already. You and like and suddenly he's gone. He's just. Gun. Of Heartbeat Heartbreak in Persona 4, your first encounter with Ornstein and Smo in Dark Souls. But you'll I rediscover all the one. little idiosyncrasies of... That, what was her name again? You'll come to a story beat and say something like, When did this ever happen? You'll come to a forest and be completely lost again. Because while distributed practice helps form deeper memories, you yeah, aren't reviewing every What's line up? of dialogue you've read, every map, every scene, every enemy, and every morsel of lore. The details you, Mom, are no. what's lost with time. And I wrote that to be kind of theatrical, because that's how my experience has been anytime I go years and years without playing a game or go months without listening to a good song. 
But as I continued researching for this video, it turns yeah. out that there is existing research that supports that this is exactly how oh, I never our finished this, this Across game. several I, experiments, I a 2013 study it. on intentional forgetting revealed a few interesting things. The first is that if I set you down and showed you a... played Outer Wilds? I... I tried playing Outer Wilds and I still have my old PC. And firstly, my PC was struggling quite a bit. My PC was struggling quite a bit. Uh. And... At that point, it was like, no! Chat was helping me get a new PC. Like, chat was like, no! Her PC is shit, we help her. I was also getting motion sick. And I was also getting motion sick from Outer Wilds. At least at, at that one day. I don't know. Okay. To be fair, I don't actually know if the game made me sick. Made me, uh, 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 dizzy, 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 dizzy. I don't actually know if the game made me dizzy. But I did get dizzy on that day when I was playing the game. So I did think it made me motion sick. But I might try it again at one point. I might try it again if you guys want to see it. And if I get motion sick from it, actually, then I, I just can't play it. I just can't play videos, it then. And at the conclusion of each one, then instructed you Cookies. to either remember or forget what you just saw, odds are you'd later remember much less of the videos you were told to forget. Which may not be surprising. Well, yeah. But what's more yeah. relevant here is that this effect kind of goes away when people are asked general questions about the video as opposed to specific ones. If the video was a woman baking cookies, it's hard to forget that she added flour, but it's easy to forget yeah. how many cups. It's tough sure, to forget yeah. that a certain character dies in Final Fantasy VII. It's easy to forget that you are left with equipment in your inventory that only they can use as a constant reminder of their passing. Oof. These findings suggest that while Oof. intentional forgetting is possible, Oof. it is much more effective on specific details than it is gist. Although you'll likely never go fully blindly into a game again, you might find yourself shocked at how challenging puzzles are, at how little of the plot's specifics you remember, yeah. at how difficult an enemy is, or how unfamiliar the map and location feels. So assuming you do want to forget the game, play it fast, enjoy it, then unplug from it entirely. Yeah. Any and every future exposure to it is to be considered a spoiler. Wrap it up and place it on a shelf in the back of your mind and don't take it down until... Uh, until... Whenever you want to play it again? Like... Three, well, four, five, question, six years? How long exactly do you let it rest? When At will least that a game year. you're trying to forget At be least a as year, I forgotten would say. as it's going to get? And this was the question that almost derailed this video because finding a definitive answer to this was One like to treating years hemorrhoid. At least, probably. Not that I know what that's like. You see, all <laughs> of the literature I was finding was focused on how to combat the forgetting curve because, you know. You guys ever popped a hemorrhoid? I haven't. Hemorrhoids seem to be more likely in men than in women, as well. You know, shockingly, most people find much more value in remembering something than forgetting. Don't know what that's about. So I was after the opposite answer in a lot of cases. Turns out, how do I forget I played Hollow Knight is not something psychologists Hello. are chomping at the bit to research. And for the most part, these studies were interested in declarative memory, what we can recall about data, moments, facts. A video game, however, is a complex set of declarative, autobiographical, and procedural memory. Celeste is not a list of arbitrary word pairs. Yeah. Zelda is not a handful a of random short video clips. So all it's of like the observations I've drawn up to this in. point are assuming quite a bit. Now I'm sweating. This video is cooked, surely. But then I found something published in 2022, a meta-analysis oh, of the University of Notre Dame that compiled a ton of these forgetting studies to put my mind at ease and get me closer to concrete answers. The first assumption it challenged is that the Ebbinghaus curve, while accurate for new one-time information, doesn't look like this for complex memories like those from gaming. It actually looks like this. It is much oh. more linear. Oh. The memories are encoded in a complex no, way, mama. like the combat coinciding with the narr oh, narrative, the music swelling with the dramatic moments, the emotions of finally beating a boss you've been stuck on, it is much harder to forget. It doesn't yeah. fade away in a few hours like a um, like, like a like a phone number would. 
And the reason yeah. is because all of these different individual data points are tangled together such that when you recall one, they might all come rushing back. If you hear the song. Oh yeah, same thing with like, have you guys ever um, smelled something and suddenly a memory is recalled to you? Yeah, for some reason, smell and uh, memory is fucking linked together in your brain. Yeah, that, that one. <laughs> For some reason, our brains just work like that. Have you ever like gotten a smell and be like nostalgic? No, not for me. Hmm, interesting. Maybe you just haven't had a significant smell. Yeah, that's happened many times. We need a game theory on that. <laughs> we don't need a theory on that. That's actually <laughs> it's already been discovered. <laughs> but that's true. Haste in some instances too, really. I mean, taste is really, really close to linked to smell as well, so I guess any stimuli could be linked to memories. Hmm, that's the smell of rain for me. Yo, the smell of rain is... Hmm. Blue skies in a battle. It reminds you of your time strategizing where to put your units in Fire Emblem Three Houses, which could remind you of when you had to pit two friends against each other, and that conjures oh. up that heartbreaking Why? dialogue that punched no. you in the gut at the recollection that you had oh, caused that's... this encounter. No, don't do it! The researchers point out that complex memories can be rebuilt exactly like this if you retrieve a portion of that memory. Just more evidence that for our purposes, you truly must remove any tiny reminders of that game if you're trying to erase it. It's for these reasons that that line is much more linear. At the start, it hmm. simply takes longer for the memory to decay. And this, as the authors point out, is what you'd expect for stories we see read here or even games that we play now they also do Damn. specify that while the curve for complex memories does appear linear this doesn't mean it'll ever reach zero complex memories don't just magically go away in theory yeah, as there, there's some are buried still there there's still if we get some more buried. and more data points it becomes harder to reconstruct those memories and when that happens it begins to look a little bit more like the ebbing house curve and eventually asymptotes but comfortingly, this still suggests that there is a point at which we're going to forget just about all yeah. we're going to forget about a game. The most, so this about study the was extremely helpful part. in clarifying how the let it rest phase is actually going to go. Essentially, it's just going to take a little longer for those memories to fade. But how much longer? We still haven't Some answered years. that. You you failed me, Notre Dame. Even your research studies are overrated. Uh, 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 you see how this uh, almost one, derailed this two, video? Three, Completely yes. defeated. I was really about to throw in the towel and just say, this is dumb. Just enjoy the memories. Never forget. Never forget. Uh huh? Do you remember where you were when 9-11 happened? No. <laughs> No! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the flashbulb memory. It's a phenomenon that goes a little like <laughs> this. If you've ever been in a wreck and remember strange little details like what shirt. I remember. Actually, like I have. I don't know if it was actually on the day of it happening, but I have a memory. I have a pretty bad memory of it, uh, because my stepfather is an asshole. Like, first of all, I don't contone or, uh, like the way my stepfather thinks at all. First and foremost, he's an asshole, and he's a really bad asshole. But I remember... Um... Him being very happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. He He's half Palestinian. He's half Palestinian, half Lebanese. Yeah. 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 And he's very radical. Very fucking bad. Uh so I have a distinct memory of like standing in the um in the living room i i can actually someone picture the, the living room like i can recall it somewhat back and like there's there's some memory of that man 
Do we need to go on a crusade? That, that guy is a fucking ass, so he's a lost cause. He's a lost cause and he's going to die alone. Like, he, he's a lost cause and he's going to die alone. There's nothing that needs to be done about him. He, he, he's already lonely as us. I, I, I live alone. I, I, I haven't interacted with that guy in forever, so I'm fine. You were wearing or what the weather was doing despite it happening years ago, you've probably had a flashbulb memory. Essentially, when an extremely emotionally significant event suddenly happens, time almost seems to slow down for you and it feels like your mind soaks up an immense amount of detail. Flashbulb memories are wildly vivid and people usually have them for historic or personally significant events, which is why most folks in the US remember where they were when 9-11 happened. It's why your parents probably know what they were doing when the Berlin Wall fell or when JFK I was assassinated. Am, I think, if the I news think my mom remembers something about the Berlin Wall. I mean, she was literally living in it. <laughs> she was literally living in it. She was living within Berlin. Within Eastern Berlin, I believe. She was in Eastern Berlin. She was on East Berlin. It comes as a shock and is emotionally impacting. Your she brain includes it with much more detail than it would the news <laughs> that, I, I don't know, your, your Amazon package is delayed. Now, your memories with the game are likely not flashbulb memories unless you've played Omori, but they are complex, and flashbulb memories are also complex. Therefore, if we can pinpoint how long flashbulb memories last for, we might be able to find a safe estimate. And then I found yeah, it, in your the wall. answer. Finally, I had stumbled oh. upon the oh. holy grail, the final piece of the puzzle. Tell Everything us. I had worked for. Yes. It's a year. It's just a, it's just oh. a year. There you go, chat. Asterisk. So two studies, right? The first was a 10-year <laughs> survey where the researchers found that the most forgetting for flashbulb memories and basic event memories happened within the first year, but did not significantly change even after a 10-year delay. The second found that while oh. flashbulb memories do have better detail than non-flashbulb memories, the rate of decline was still the same for both. After okay. a year, the same memory faults remain, suggesting that the line has almost fully flattened out after one year's time. The asterisk is, of course, that flashbulb memories, while complex like our memories of games, are not encoded in the same way. They're emotionally driven, oftentimes traumatic, and capture oh a particular God. instance in time, not for several multi-hour long play sessions. But there are similarities as well. Uh, we think about them repeatedly after they happen. Folks talk with us about them, and that both reminds us of them and leads us to elaborate on them. They both become complex because of the emotions and the consequences and the associations and the repetition. And if yeah. this is how long flashbulb memories last, it stands to reason that gaming memories have at least a similar expiration date. A point in time when you've forgotten almost all you're going to forget about a game where the <laughs> line I haven't fed any in ages, oh my god. So the strategy is as follows. If you're planning to play something you think you'll want to forget, speed through it, then let it rest. If you've already played it, just let it rest. Think about it as little as you possibly can yeah. for a year or more. Remove all of your exposure to that game. Play other stuff to distract yourself from it. Wrap it up, put it on a shelf in the back of your mind, Don't and then let it ferment it. until it's aged like fine wine. And this should work for movies and books and shows too, yeah, since the they're arguably a little less complex on account of being less interactive. And speaking from experience, I'd go longer than a year, or even a few Definitely years to really I would seal say in the ignorance. Two, three years. <laughs> There, <laughs> there's the next shirt, everybody. Daryl talks games. Seal in the ignorance. <laughs> I could wrap this video up by telling you that this felt like an impossible question to answer. It was one of the silliest prompts I had on my list of video ideas, and it was such an interesting question that I had to at least try and present you all with a good answer. He did an answer so good for that it. That maybe you'll put into practice. But I want to pause. He actually and look did at those so well for it, again. man. All you have to do to forget a game in order to play it again blind is play through it as quickly as possible one weekend, then don't allow yourself to think about it. Shove all of that fun, all of those glorious, inspiring hours down into the depths of your subconscious and close the door. And do not allow yourself to think about it 
for years just to be safe. Then you can finally open it again down the line when you're ready to pretend you've never experienced that it. One. If I told you to do that for a human being so that you could meet your best friend for the first time again or have your first kiss with your lover. Yeah, that would be again, crazy. This would sound insane. That would that would actually be insanity. It what the honestly fuck? Honestly, sounds insane even when it's for a video game. So my real advice here is I don't think it sounds that insane. Don't take this video advice. Game. Don't forget your time with that game. Life is not a series of endlessly chewable morsels that you can bottle up and re-experience. Your time on this planet was not meant to be captured and placed on an Instagram no! story or saved. Why are you hitting us with the existential dread? Daryl! You are the chosen one! Oops. To be relived later. Never mind, it's a series about existential of moments that are meant to be lived. Not rushed, not optimized, not filmed, not monetized, not the clock is taking, Shut the fuck up, please. My please, advice, instead please. of wishing you could play a game blind, <laughs> oh. is to encourage someone else to play it blind who truly can, so that you can share that joy with someone else. Soak up every drop of warmth from that adventure until the flame goes out. And if you just so happen to get swept away in life and you naturally haven't had time to revisit that one special sprawling artificial world in years and you haven't listened to the soundtrack then or have any interest in watching anyone else it. play it, just know that if you ever do decide to boot it up again, it will greet you like an old friend. Your mind Just Google Florida man tries to give himself brain damage to start Skyrim anew. No way. We're gonna. I, I'm gonna. And will it after ignite the at the tender details that have been completely lost. You'll find yourself swaddled by the warm embrace of this place, and with any luck, it'll feel just like the first time. I love their old talks. Hey there, everyone. Videos. Thanks for indulging me on a topic that felt extremely out there, but maybe it was extremely interesting. If you enjoyed what you saw and want really to see more, hit that subscribe button down below and be sure to leave a like. Let me know what game you'd like to play again for the first time down below. And if you'd like to support the show, Definitely check out my here. Patreon page. For one yes, single three. dollar a month, you can get all kinds of bonus one content, single dollar. Content, weekly Whoa. updates, and your name in the credits like you see here. A special thanks to this month's featured patrons. John Smith. a and R. I thought he's gonna leave it at John Smith. Video ends. Gavin Trout. Jack Edelhauser. Philip Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. Paul job, Gaston. Philip. Yo. Robin. Bring it in for Robin. And long March 9. Long Thanks March again for nine. watching. Take care. And please have yourself a damn good one. Yeah. I They're really hope that was good. Worth it. I feel so stupid. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what was it about? Florida? Florida man tries to give himself brain damage to play Skyrim again. It's an actually a news article. Why is it always Florida, man? Man, what's up with Florida? Oh, Florida, Florida, you insane. Well, other way, <laughs> let's end it here. Thanks for watching, YouTube.